for those who watched the latest version of the Joker. There is this moment where he starts his transformation and he goes to his social worker and he says to her, you don't understand. Until recently, I didn't even know I existed. You didn't even know I existed. You didn't even look at me. You kept sitting there, looking at your notes, looking at your computer. You didn't treat me as a person. Now that's an exaggerated version of a very real reality. Hello and welcome to the Vinny Brusco Show podcast. This is the second part of my conversation with Dr. Ido Cohen. Dr. Cohen is a psychedelic integration psychologist, a depth psychologist, and he's also the founder of the Integration Circle, a workshop that is focused on preparation and integration of expanded states of consciousness. So I hope you enjoy part two of my conversation with Dr. Ido Cohen. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Ido Cohen. Welcome to the Vinny Brasco Show. You're listening to the amazing podcast. And here we go. And when I first read um, uh, The Power of Now, and Eckhart mm. Tolle talks about oh, the yeah. silence that lies beneath all things. I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> like, what is, like, I knew, but I couldn't. I didn't know, right? Like I knew what he was talking about, but I and I'd search for that silence in like everyday life. Like, where's this silence? And in between something that happens to you and and how you choose to respond versus react, there is there is time. Very it may be feel very short, but there is time. Yeah. And therein lies, like to me, where a line of demarcation in my life where I became a man right, is where I was able to, res not all the time, not all the time, but I was able to respond rather than react. Yeah. And to touch upon what you were speaking about earlier, when you, when you drank the medicine and you went to the, the, the big, <laughs> the television screens of all your realities and all your thoughts and all your versions of you, those, those thoughts are there. You know, and this yeah. was something for me with, with the sensory deprivation tank was that when I first wanted to go into the tank, my first thought was, I'm afraid of what I'm going to think. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I said, well, that's scarier than anything I'll think in that tank, because those thoughts are happening. And whether I interface with them and bring them to, to my forefront or I leave them stewing in the back, they are affecting me every moment of my life. And in that moment, I booked the call and I was like, I'm going to the float tank and whatever, whatever thought I'm safe there. Right. And I think that's such a huge part of the integration. And to your point is knowing that you are safe within this brotherhood, this sisterhood, this community or within yourself. But if you don't feel that safety within yourself, mm. then you are not going to be able to integrate the lessons and apply what you've learned absolutely that's that's profound what you just said um so for everybody who's listening rewind that listen <laughs> i'll snip again. that part out <clears throat> no that's that's thank you that's for the compliment part. that's really that's profound um it's exactly that but how do we create the disconnect from ourselves the prolonged disconnection that's what fuels the lack of safety and what i mean by that Right. The more I push away, so let's use uh, pop psychology. The more I suppress my feelings, the more I um, repress my feelings, the more I'll be scared of them. I tell my people, I'm like anything you repress becomes mythological. Oh, <laughs> the more you repress now, it, <laughs> yes. The more you repress it, you don't understand that you're making that thing into mythological proportion, it becomes an archetype. So what I mean by that, if you have an inner critic that you keep avoiding, that inner critic is gonna become mythological. It's gonna take mythological, it's gonna take a mythological figure. And I see this in people and when I try to tell them to like, like shape your, your inner critic for me, it always starts with this like huge, r mean, <laughs> bigger that's bigger than life sure. Why? because it's been pumped energy for years of of denial what i'm thinking of is um of uh of mickey mouse when when um with the mops boop, 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 and then that big 
like silhouette ghost. It's just like, you know what I mean? Like it's just, nah. it's got empty hollow eyes and it's just dark and ominous and it's just growing and getting bigger. It's exactly that. Yeah. Right. And that's not just because people, and again, I don't want to make this about people at fault. It's because nobody teaches us from the beginning to do that connection. Right. So here's we back to childhood. If I grew up with parents like you, who are going to teach me to be with my experience, to learn how to, and to develop true um, resilience, which resilience means I feel, I experience, I reflect, I make meaning, I move forward, accountability, I make changes. Then I don't have to repress as much. Then I can be in better relationships. Then it's not going to become a mythological figure. That first experience that I haven't had on ayahuasca took me years to deconstruct that. Because I had to look at all those TV screens one by Do one. Do you remember them? Oh, God. Um, I think it was a lot of how my inner critic was both shredding myself, but also projected on other people. Sure. I think it had to do a lot with growing up in a country where there's so much collective trauma that I, you know, at any moment, something can blow up. And how does that fuel anxiety? And how does that fuel human relationships? I think it had to do with intimacy, wounds that I was carrying from my early attachments. Um, I can't name, it was so many. Yeah, but the lessons were there. Oh, and but I think what I'm saying is what you said, which is even if you don't deal with them, they're becoming your your OS. That's your oper your operating system. They're always work working in the background. Jung said, "What you repress will talk to you through symptoms, and symptoms are not just physical symptoms. Right. They're not just depression. Symptoms can be your anger. Symptoms can be why don't why don't I have any friends? Symptoms can be the fact that every night I can't fall asleep if I don't watch something." Right. Again, if I don't numb myself somehow, symptoms can be much more subtle than what we think about medically as symptoms. And what is it? It's because something in us, right? The psyche always strives for wholeness. That's a, that's the nature of that organism. Of well, that that's entity. all that's all things in 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 the universe, right? Exactly. He took that from nature. It's this nature. My observation. Exactly. It's our it's nature. All nature is always striving for unif for unification and wholeness. But when the you're problem fighting is, that natural law, that's when trouble begins. And we and we see things from our very our own lens. And when you right, right, it's it's yeah, as you zoom out, right, and you and if you're in space, all you just see is the the the, the orb floating. That's all you see. It's mm -hmm. pure balanced. You know, it's there is no right or wrong, good or bad. It is perfectly in balance. Yeah. And we are operating within the confines of I am this person, I live at this address, I drive to work this route and this way, and I have this interaction with this person. And we operate so in our own bodies that we don't give ourselves the time or the space to become the observer of ourselves and realize that you are not your thoughts and you brought up a great thing of making meaning out of these these interactions and where you know you could take on different meanings and i i just had something happen to me with with school mm. i changed everything and i and i looked and i said well is this god source universe telling me this is it god source universe telling me that is it god source universe the force telling me that and then i stopped and said it's all of those things it's all of those things. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of which one I want to pull on because it is every single one of those things because I am making it every single one of those things mm -hmm. in my speech. So if I say, well, it's God telling me not to do this anymore, well, then that's what I'm going to believe and that's what I'm going to follow. Yep. But the only way to get past that is to realize that you are not any of those thoughts, but you are just observing them and now you have to make a choice of which one of those rabbit holes you want to go down. 
beautifully said right and that allows you that you, you mentioned it in passing responding versus reacting when we don't do what you just said we are we're just reacting and if you don't you mentioned that Vinny in passing we have to teach ourselves to open that space because if I don't open that space I I tell people you're an automatic pilot you think you're free you think you're making choices but you're not really free what's making choices is those operating systems for you so if you feel like you know it comes big when people get to choices where one of them feels really scary there's a lot of risk and one feels safe usually we will orient to the safe why because we want to stay right we want to stay in safety because going into the risky, going into the unknown is terrifying. But if I don't open up that space, I will react. I will be like, well, you know, this feeling, this choice feels bad. It makes my body like start shaking and it makes me feel like scared and stuff. So probably it's the wrong choice. That's reaction. What you're saying for me is I open up this space inside. I zoom out. So I can respond. Respond is choosing. It's choice. That's freedom. That's personal freedom. To do what you beautifully did. Like, wow, look at all these things on the table. I can choose any one of these. Every one of these is going to be a turn on the path. But if I open that space, I get to choose. I get to respond to the situation as opposed to like letting my autopilot make the decision for me and that changes your life when you get when you have that as, as a practice everything starts changing but i think it's also important to seek the physical discomforts as well which allow you to build the resilience of the oh, mental and the spiritual discomforts oh I, i'm i'm saying that absolutely because when you open that space what's scary is just a feeling. It's like, well, this option makes me scared, but it actually feels like the right option. So although I'm scared and I'm going to be uncomfortable, I'm going to walk through that. So I stop. I'm totally with you. So we stop the avoidance, right? And we walk through it. But I have to have that space to be like, okay, you know, it scares me, but scary doesn't mean it's wrong. I tell people a lot that I have this thing with um, fear of the unknown. Now, it's not that I'm immune to it by any means. But I tell people that the unknown is not scary. It can't be. It's unknown. How can well, that's you why scared? so many people are afraid of death, right? It's the unknown. Exactly. No, but why are people afraid of death or the unknown? I say, my metaphor is this. If the unknown is an empty canvas... If you look at a white canvas, most people, most, you look at it, it's just a white canvas. It doesn't scare you. So if the white canvas is the unknown, why is it scary? Because you already painted it. You already splashed colors unconsciously, right? That operating system you were talking about on it. So you don't see a white canvas. You see a whole splash of black. You see a splash of bright red. So you're reacting to that. So you're reacting to experiences you've had with the unknown. So you think like, oh, I'm going to get hurt. Oh my God, no, I already had an experience of being hurt, of being uh, rejected or things going bad for me. So that becomes the unknown. It's not really, like you said, it's not that apty. That, that beautiful emptiness that's full of potential and abundance it's already i already created a narrative about it well it it, it lies along with what color that can like what came for me is that what color is the canvas right if the color of the canvas is white right then it 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 screams potential because it's blank right exactly but if the entire canvas is black that takes on a completely different feeling. Absolutely. And rather than being able to create on that canvas, we now need to strip away the color or strip away the darkness in order to get to the white canvas. 
Exactly. And when you could sit and again, having those, whether it be ayahuasca or psilocybin or sensory deprivation tank, or even breath work, which is such an amazing, I've had amazing experiences doing breath work. Absolutely. Unbelievable. It, it allows you to go through that darkness ultimately towards a white light and then obviously you have the metallica no leaf clover which might be a freight train <laughs> but you won't know until you go through the darkness absolutely absolutely and it it builds you i don't know i'm I'm just on that theme of what we said before it builds that psycho spiritual resilience hmm. i remember being in peru once and someone asked one of the shamans about doubts it's like, you know, I have a lot of doubt in my life. And and the shaman was like, you think I don't have doubt? He's like, I, I sing to you and I have doubt. Wow. Like, but, I, but I walk with my doubt. This is where we Westerners have a lot to learn. We try to like make things disappear. Oh, I can just be fearless. If you're fearless, you're screwed. And I'll tell you why. Because when you're in nature... You need to have fear in your system because then you'll know, you'll listen if a bear walks behind you <laughs> right. or a snake is coming. Right. You need fear to survive. Right. But we try to make it all disappear as opposed to be like, like what we're saying, which is I'm afraid and I'm walking forward anyway. I have doubt and I'm going to walk into that canvas anyway, because if I do that, there's an opportunity for me to see that there is something beyond the doubt. So I'm scared of walking into that breathwork session. Something is being anxious. Okay, I breathe into my anxiety. I reassure myself that I'm safe, like you said so beautifully. I have my brother here or my friend here or my partner is here. And then all of a sudden, when you were able to be with that and develop relationship with that emotional resilience, something, a new vista opens up inside or outside or both yeah and and the, and that data that you're receiving from your body is is strictly that it's your interpretation of the data right it's just whether it be anxiety or excitement they both come up the same way on brainwave scans right it's it's the same exact thing it's again just the interpretation of the moment and the mm -hmm. feeling that the moment's creating uh from all your experiences with with plant medicine and psychotherapy and spirituality what do you think the underlining theme or the 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 number one thing that you would attribute to what people are seeking in life? Hmm. That's a really good question. The number one thing, let's choose one. And it can't be love. Because I yes, think there's that's, it's, that's, 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 that's like at the root, right? That's like exactly. at the root. It's like exactly. love. We get exactly. that. We, you know, obviously. Connection. Mm. I was going to say to be seen, which is connection. Connection. Absolutely. Unequivocally. We, we hate that fact. And we, we long for it with every single cell of our body. There is this great quote by um, I think it's Donald Winnicott. He's a pretty famous psychologist from the relational movement. And he says, it's a joy to be hidden, but a terror not to be found. Mm. That goes back to hide and seek. <laughs> a joy to be hidden. <laughs> And a terror not to be found. And what does he mean by that? It means we all find comfort in, in staying safe and hiding our true self. But at the same time, we're terrified that nobody will ever find us because we want to be found, to be seen. People want connection all the time with themselves, with others, with the universe, with nature, with behind all our sophistications it's truly about connection now why we fight it that's a wonderful topic so why do you think we fight it it's vulnerable 
for you and I to develop a friendship, a real friendship, we both have we'll, we'll both have to take risks. I don't know if you've seen this. I don't know. I'm not gonna project that on you, but it's a very known phenomena. For example, for men, that men after a certain age have a really hard time making friends. So pretty much the friends you have until you're 45, 50, or unless you've done your work, are going to be your friends for life. That's why single white males in their 50s are the number one group for suicide. Because they're lonely. It's We're terrified. We're terrified of taking the risks. We're terrified of making that first step. We're terrified of saying something and then... Other men be like, well, who's this fucking pussy? <laughs> Wants to talk right. about feeling? What if I go, I want to watch football? I'm not, again, I'm not making fun of people who watch football. Please, it's not about that. It's about can we take the risks? Can people be open? Can we put the emotional, the, the psycho emotional effort to try and connect with people? And it's not just other people, it's our partners. Right, the arc of marriage is always kind of decreases with age, as far as levels of connection and intimacy, unless the couple works on it. That's when usually couples get to couples therapy. Sadly, when they they get to like their own version of rock bottom, it's like okay, the situation is really bad. And what they're saying, whether all couples, unless there's like even when there's infidelity, even when there's, they come to work on the same two things, communication and connection if we take love out connection means are we sexually connected are we physically connected are we emotionally bonded and if for couples who want it are we spiritually connected and then the communication is the bridge to get to all those places if you're enjoying the podcast do me a favor subscribe rate and review the show wherever you're getting it spread the word tell a friend hack the algorithm and let's get this mamma jamma rolling Communication is such a huge component of any relationship and any dynamic. And it's funny you mention the idea of, you know, white males at a certain age and that being the highest level of suicide. And I facilitate a men's group. And it's funny when Uh you start to invite people to the group and some guy, and it's usually based off of like conversations, like I'll, I'll kind of like, poking prod at people I'm like all right all right you're you're kind of there you're on the level you want to come to the men's group but it's funny when you start to offer that space to people the responses you get are uh, like you get everything from Give me the idea example. of it being a homophobic gathering of everyone playing ookie cookie and you know a, 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 a weightlifting contest and what do you, you know it always goes to something other and it's i'm like yeah that's you know and I, I never take it personal. I always realize, and I it, at first I would have, but I realized if I had, hadn't done the work on myself, I realized that that's just their own reflection and their own discomfort yes. in sitting in a space where they're going to be vulnerable, where they're going to exactly. be with other guys. They're going to they're gonna talk about their feelings. Yes. And I don't judge it. I just invite it. And if it's not for you, cool. Not for you, no problem. But it's there if you need it, and that's it. And that's and that's how it, that's how it's shown up. And you know, it, it, but it's funny that you say that because it, it is something where, especially as men, that connection, that 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 community, we think brotherhood and bonding and all this stuff. And yeah, all right, we're warriors. And you know, you you, you yeah. But then when it comes to the other side of the warrior, right? And there's that great book, The King, The Warrior, The Magician, The Lover, right? Mm -hmm. One of my favorite books of all time. And it's about that duality of experience and that duality of power and that duality Mm -hmm. of of anger. It's just, it's it's all there. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing that when you offer the other side of that bravado, people instantly shut down and it becomes about something completely different. It can never just be no thank you. I love that you (laughs) offer that. It can never be no thank you. It's never just, oh, no thanks. Because you said it. It it threatens something deep inside these men that they have to be violent towards the thing that's making them feel this way. So when you offer that to them and they're like, 
talk about my feelings, it triggers their relationship with their feelings. So they have to demonize you because right. you're the trigger. Right. But you said it so beautifully. It actually exposes your relationship with yourself. You know what's interesting about this? Is that most of these men, they don't know what it means to be a warrior. When you're in the army, you know how much, how close to homosexual activity there is in the army. And the more secret, the more on the line, the more specialized your unit is, they have even more borderline homosexual rituals. Well, there's an intimacy there. Exactly. There's you a connection have to have there. It. When you're going to fucking risk your life with someone, you have to bond with them deeply intimately my brother was in this very special unit in the israeli army when he would tell me what they were doing on their time out it would crack me up i can't say it because you know right, right. It's, <laughs> but it's a lot of physical intimacy it's a lot of closeness it's a lot of physical touch and it's also a lot of fucking bonding because i need to know that i can trust you and if we're going to go to being, if we're going to go to the other end of being a warrior, that warrior that needs to fight, we're already so close that I can know, I don't have to turn my head to know if you're going to take, like, have my back. I know you're going to have my back. Wow. Yeah. And that comes only through the other side of the warrior. Mm. And that's what men don't understand. So I, I love that. I do judge it. And I'll tell you what I'm judging. I'm not judging their reaction, but I'm judging the the fact that men choose to play along and continue passing on that wound. That I judge. You don't like men's groups? Fine. But shut the fuck up. <laughs> Use my language. Don't go and demonize it. You yeah. don't like it? It's not for you? Great. But don't get on your soapbox on Instagram or Facebook or whatever and shame other men who want to evolve yeah and it's it's really beautiful that i have a, that's the judgment i do have yeah no because that's what keeps a lot of men in this masculine prison yeah in that wound yeah and and it's it's beautiful to see the diversity of you know age race mm. you know everything you know everything it all it, it's it's, it's it's a melting pot and you know it, again it goes back to that point earlier where there is a, a a connective tissue that lies between all all being right. Where you want to say man, woman, whatever it is, it's just a, a a physical expression of that energy. But there is this connective tissue that when you when we're in that space, it's I mean you could you could feel the thread. You could you could you know and and it's funny coincidentally or serendipitously, uh, one of the groups was very very powerful, and I came home and I was expressing to my wife. I was like, I feel like I just had like a Thanksgiving dinner. I feel so full. Mm. And I felt like throughout the meeting, there was this golden, and I didn't even know that this chakra was like, I know the chakras. I didn't know the color of it, but uh, I was like, I feel like there was like this yarn, this yellow yarn that was just dancing through the room. Uh. And I then looked up what chakra that was. And then I heard, I'm sorry. The solar plexus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's yellow. And, and, and then I heard Jordan Peterson on Joe Rogan talking about the golden thread that leads out of the maze. And if you follow that thread, you can guide yourself to what do you call it? Freedom. You want to call it God. You want to call it yep. peace. You want to call it harmony. Yep. That is the thread. And when you, and when you can connect that thread with other people, it is so powerful. So what he's talking about is actually a neo Jungian concept that's called the golden shadow. The golden shadow is the things you dis that your most authentic psycho spiritual parts of you that you don't even know exist. So there is the shadow, right? What we call like the traumas, all this, but there is this thing that we don't even know exists, and it comes through experiences like this. So when you're a man and all your emotional like self has been repressed and you sit with other men, all of a sudden you feel your heart, like what you felt, you feel connected, you feel open, you feel alive. That's that golden shadow starting to talk to you. It's like, you have that capacity. You didn't even know you had it. 
And if you pull on that thread, all kinds of things come out. That's when people really discover their, their true purpose. And that goes back to Greek mythology because that's what he was referencing, uh, the golden thread. I think it's Ariandi's golden thread where she her mm -hmm. lover gets trapped in a maze and she provides him with a golden thread to get out of the maze. And if you think about that and translate that and take it from the mythological to the reality that we're living with, there's a thread and a maze that you live and reside in that's yes. guided by, again, back to the, the cheesy foundation of all of it, love. And if you follow that thread, it takes you out of the maze that is yourself and guides you as the alchemist back to who you are. Exactly. And that who you are is someone that you don't even know on some level, right? This is where people you forgot. <laughs> well, it was that, seeped but, out of you at seven years old, like my poor daughter. <laughs> poor thing. Well, she's lucky to have a father like you, because <laughs> you. you're going to help her remember. Thank you. Um, but it's the part of you that you forgot. But there's also right how this, how the golden thread um, wants you to actualize who you are in this lifetime, right? So this is when the CEO becomes a gardener. Right. And this is when the 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 warrior who was so cut off becomes starts doing men's groups because he understands the value of brotherhood. Because now it's part of his part of his mission, part of his passion, part of his like purpose in the world. There is parts of us that we don't even know yet that are so powerful, beautiful us. That only if we pull on this thread that you're talking about, on that golden shadow, we discover. And they're so far out of who we think we are. I didn't think I'd end up here having this conversation with you 15 years ago. No right. way. Right. Yeah, here I am. But it becomes, it becomes again, a societal somewhat responsibility because you look at something like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? And the top of that, 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 that triangle, right. As you know, it's sometimes per portrayed as is self-actualization, but yeah. all your other needs need to be met, right? You need to be safe. You need to be fed. You need to be housed, right? Those things need to be, need to be met. But now we have this new version of society that says, those needs are now exacerbated and they're times a thousand and it needs to be this car and it needs to be this house and it needs to be yeah. this thing. Yeah. Then yeah. you'll be fulfilled and then you'll be able to become self-actualized when really you could be a homeless person under a bridge eating a can of beans. And that may be your version of, of the, the hierarchy of needs that allows you to get on the trajectory of self-actualization. Yes. And that's very, I mean, we should, yes. And we need to be a little careful here, but yes, I think that's one, something that's hard for us to accept. I think there's, as humans, it's hard for us to accept that not all of us, not all of us are destined for greatness. Mm. If there is true force, this is where accepting, right? The, the, there is whatever we want to call that, essence that impacts the life that's beyond us that the plan is not the same plan for all of us that's why some you know god forbid some babies die at birth that's why some people live until they're 99 and everything in between our destiny is not the same and it's really hard to accept it because it exposes our mortality yeah there's like the, the 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 delicate essence of our humanity that at any moment everything can end and we don't even know it. that yeah maybe my life is destined in some way to have struggles but and in all that we also have to keep in mind that a lot of our life is shaped by systems systems that are based on agendas systems that are based on profit systems that are based on oppression so that homeless person maybe that's his actualization because he is literally screwed by the system sure if we invested you know you've probably seen all that like 
Super Bowl money, how much an ad cost, and all that like yeah. ridiculousness. That's insane, right? If you really have a gripe with football, no, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I hope people don't think that. <laughs> I actually admire any sport, <laughs> what people can do with their bodies. But yes, no, no. I'm, I'm more of a basketball person myself. Um, if we channeled money back to, you know, this, I'm not a big Osho fan, but one of the things that I loved, really, I took to heart from Osho, he's talking about you take money, you put it into, you take matter, money, put it in spirit, then spirit creates money then money put in spirit and spirit creates matter he's like if you do that things were going to get and i think he's so right if we took money and put it into solving the real world problems all countries took that money what will happen to the homeless person as far as self-actualization i don't know i really don't know i'm not saying that all people will also all of a sudden become you know enlightened beings that's a tall order, but will they have a better life? Sure. Oh, the opportunity. You're absolutely right. But you're absolutely right. You know, there is that. There is a wonderful. Have you watched uh, American Gods? I read Neil the book. Gaiman? Okay. The show is fantastic. I started watching the show and then I fell off like every show I start watching. But uh, the book <laughs> is amazing. It's a great book. The book is amazing. Amazing. Book. Right. So he talks about the new gods. Yeah. Right? So we moved from Zeus and, and Odin and all those guys that write in the book, Kali, to money, media, M-E-D-I-A. Uh, binary, right? Yep. Is another god there, right? So Technology. that's what we're talking about. Technology, right? So we were talking about, oh, the new card, the new this. We're worshiping, we're just worshiping another god. We just don't call it a god. Some people do. Amen to that. <laughs> Right, Instagram. Right, there is that in the show. You see, media. She's this very cartoonish figure, and she gets her wor worship language is likes, comments, right? Everything and retweets. That's her. That's her worship like language, and it really makes you think about holy, who am I worshiping when I'm craving all this more? Am I even aware that I'm doing that? Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't want more. But if that's your pinnacle of yours, like you said, of your, your triangle, that's that's probably going to lead to issues. Well, it's funny that you say that because I, I was early, a few months back, I was doing very early morning runs. And on those yeah. runs, I don't have any music, nothing, just my thoughts. And they really have become very therapeutic. And I had this, this moment where I kind of, I don't know, whatever it was, I was like, if you really think about it and you think about like what you're what you're referencing, think about like the things that are um, used symbolically in these social media platforms, their hearts, their thumbs up. There are all these subtle, mm. these subtle images and symbols of love and admiration and likes and follows and all these things that are hijacking our subconscious into, you know, wanting to be more and wanting more, which again, to your point, there's nothing wrong with aspiration. There's nothing wrong with wanting a beautiful car or beautiful watch or expensive clothes. And that's where, you know, that relationship of like the guru who's given away everything, who lives in a, a mountain top of the, you know, and sitting full Lotus meditating all day. And then, you know, the, the, the extreme version of that on the other end, that's where it's, it gets tainted. And it really yeah. is about the relationship you have with these things, because to the, the point we were speaking on earlier, it's the idea of it's this external representation of the internal arrival of a place. Mm. External representation of the internal arrival of a place. Ah, Vinny, that's so good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna trademark <laughs> Take you. It. Take it. It's exactly that. It's exactly that. And if I keep searching for that recognition, right? That's the hungry. We're back to the hungry ghost, right? If I keep searching, I'm like, okay, maybe this watch or that person or that that hot car or that house or that's x amount of money you're never going to get there right it's a cliche but we know because it doesn't fulfill what you're saying 
there is no inner arrival. Mm. There is no inner arrival. I remember, you know, when Dave Chappelle had his whole thing, right? When he got disappeared to Africa and then, you know, wiped himself off the face of the universe to only to reemerge like Batman. Um, he talked about having this conversation with his dad before he started show business. And his dad told him, now, before you're like getting big, name your price. Name the point in which you are not going to sell your soul. What's the amount that you're going to say, you know what? Not doing that because it's at the cost of my soul. And I really, I was like, that's a good dad. Because that's a dad that understands that that can happen. That knows that it happens when you become big. When money is involved, that archetype, that archetype is so powerful. Oh God, if people knew how money is, how powerful money is really. How I it just, shapes. Go ahead. Yo, I just finished uh, Think and Grow Rich. And mm. uh, which is, which again, you know, you could take it on the, the surface levels of how can I make more money, right? And there is value to that. But when you recognize the real, and, and it's a great read, oldest time, but it's a great read. And it's really, to your point, it's it's an energy and it's a commitment and it's and it's showing up in these ways of self and essence and allowing the money to be the external representation of that. Yeah. But as you were saying, it is just a transaction of energy. Exactly. It's just a transaction of energy, but that energy is intoxicating. And that energy really is freedom. Absolutely. And I'm I'm very pro money in the sense that money is a tool we all need to have really good relationship with. Because money can move mountains. It's not about being against money. You know, like I'm not I I haven't dug deep into him, but you know, um Mr. Big from YouTube, right? Who is like 25 and like multi-billionaire and has like 500 million followers mr beast on mr beast thank you right he has this really interesting thing with money he talks about how most of what he makes he reinvests back in the thing and how again i'm sure there's a lot more complexity to it but there's something in his narrative that i think is related to what we're talking about is how do you take it and you create and you move energy with money right I heard this wonderful woman talk about how power is the ability to move energy within systems. That that's true power. And I really heard that. I was like, you know what? If I strip down all the like notions, that's, she's absolutely right. Money is the ability to move energy within systems. It means I can be the CEO who in, right? I can be Elon Musk who in a, snap of my finger can change Twitter and then impact millions of people. I can be a, a mother who walks in like, you know what, from today, poof, I'm making only healthy food for my kids and anything in between. It's the ability to, and it's all about energy. It's the ability to move energy within systems. And that's also your internal system. Mm. Right? So that means instead of like, okay, you know what, instead of keeping on hitting the snooze button, I go inside I do some process, I move energy, and now the energy is going to say no more hitting snooze. Boom, seven o'clock, I'm up. To your biggest life transitions and transformations. Right? So it's not, I, I think it's important just to say what you're saying, what we're saying right now, as opposed to like not move, let's strip away energy from like the West Coast woo woo. It's like this amorphic thing. No, no, no. Your body works on energy, food gets digested, breaks down into what? Particles of things that are energy that are fueling your muscles. Right? So the idea that energy is not just some spiritual concept, it's a real thing that we're always doing. And what if we harness power as moving energy in systems? We outsource that energy and we outsource that power. 
Mm. Right. We outsource it to a leader, to a, a religion, to whatever, to a food. And we also don't give ourselves that that nutrient dense. That's why when you eat, when you eat healthy food, you're 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 full because you're eating nutrient dense food, right? Your body's not craving more Doritos. And I I like Doritos. I'm wrong, but you know you're not craving it, right? It's and then all of a sudden you start. And again, that may be a pathway onto the next thing, which is like, well, I want to eat right. Okay, well, I want to move my body right. Well. Well, I'm not gonna eat like shit if I want my body right. Well, now I want my mind to be right because I want, and then it becomes this energetic system within yourself, and now you are moving energy, energy within a system, and now you feel more powerful because you have more clarity of mind, you have more function of body, you have mm -hmm. more connection to spirit. So when you're able to work within your own system. You don't have to worry about the external system. The external system is, I hate to say too big, but you have to worry about your own internal system and then you can kind of fill your own cup to fill others. Why do you feel, why do you think we outsource? You do men's groups. That's great. That's a great in, into that world. Why do you think we outsource power? Fear. Of? Ourselves. Because the realization that we are as powerful as a god is debilitating. Mm. And not God, capital G, capital O, capital D. Right, right, right. right. Not to be blasphemic. But when you realize that you have God-like power and you could alchemize life and you can, and it's to what you're saying, you, not everybody's destined for greatness, but what is your version of greatness? And can you show up to be great in those moments, every single one of them, taking garlic, razor thin slices of garlic of life, mm. steps, 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 and being present in those steps. So I think we outsource our power because of the fear of the power we actually have within ourselves. That's powerful. Okay, I want to take you ask you one step deeper sure why do you think people are afraid to understand that they have the creative force to be continued no uh <laughs> <laughs> i have to sit on that i have to Touché, sit on that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i have to i can't you know nothing nothing i mean what comes to me initially is is just again i guess that that vulnerability piece that we spoke about mm -hmm. that 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 being and showing up as the child self and, and mm. uh, 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 unapologetically, you know, unapologetically. And maybe that is something that we, we have to lose to regain, you know, back to who we are. And again, having two children at, at eight and three, I get to see it on played out for me. It's beautiful, you know, to see the raw authenticity of a three-year-old boy and mm -hmm. the refined, filtered life that is evolving for an eight-year-old girl. And uh, and to know them both from the moment of the most, one of the most surreal moments of my life to where we are currently, it's it's watching an evolution process and it's, it's wild. And I think that if we uh, go back to that child self, even before seven, eight, back to like three and two. And, you know, going back to that question of, you know, remind me of God, I, I'm, I'm forgetting, you know, yeah. because you come from a place of God. And again, not in this religious Jesus Christ, you know, but a place of God and a place of mm -hmm. wholeness. Yes. And when you outsource your power, you're diluting your wholeness. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it makes me. I don't think there's any one answer, obviously, sure. um, but there's this great author and she talks about how the moment we realize what you're saying and the insight wants to move to the outer world, for most of, most of us, what shows up is what she calls the trembling child. The child that is scared of my capacity to create change because which that's kind of you know, not to quote Spider-Man. I was just thinking, to... yeah, 100%. So 
Say the sense of responsibility <laughs> is right. can be paralyzing with that ability, with that understanding that you are a creator, your actions, your like you said before, your thoughts, the way you relate to yourself to the world comes with a lot of honesty and responsibility and accountability. So you can't just fly on you can't just fly on automatic anymore. Because all of a sudden, you know, but that's one of the things that's really interesting for me to people who do a lot of therapy or people who do psychedelics or people who have like a true psycho spiritual like practice. Doesn't matter which tradition, eventually people get to the same point where they're like, holy shit. I am realizing how much influence I have on people. I understand that when I go to buy groceries, and I sit in line, and it's my turn. The way I talk to that, first of all, there is a person on the other fucking end of that. <laughs> the cashier is a person. Oh my God, they are a person. And they're coming from a place, and they just had a day, and they just had an experience, and they just hit traffic, and they spilt their coffee on their lap, and now they have to get into work, and now all of that happened, and now you're walking up, and they're going, boop. And you're so like, you... good morning. And they're like, go fuck yourself. How do you internalize <laughs> that? Right? Or you can be, not be a robot and you say like, hey, good morning. How are you? But you actually look them in the eyes and you're right. actually fucking curious because there's a person. And you also, when they give you that same like, oh, fuck you. I don't want to talk to you. You're like, okay, do you know, do you remember that they're a person and they're probably being on their feet for the last 10 hours? And they have a whole story that led to that single moment when they met you. And I see this across all people, different races, different. And they all get to that place where, and again, this is where I think a lot of one of our themes, you go all the way out to come back to being a human being with a human being. All that spirituality, all those trips, all those insights, all those experiences, you're like, to your embodiment, right? That's what we said. I bring it, I'm like, I show up with Vinny, but I'm a totally different person. Ramdas has a story about being in a, a meditation retreat and the bunk underneath him is this like really put together like banker. And he's looking at him, he's like, hi, hello. He's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> right. And he tells him a story. He says like, I was a banker. This was way back. He's like, you know, got to the, the 60s, met me. I did the whole acid trip. Became a poet, did the whole thing. And came back to what we're saying. It's like, it doesn't matter who you are. It's better how you do it. And he's like, now, back then, I was a banker. Now, I'm a being who's playing out a banker. So when people come to me to ask for a loan and they're stressed and they're worried and I see them, I respond to them from that place of being. So I have compassion. I have empathy. I'm attuned to them. I try to help them. And if we think about it as like small things, but it's not small at all. That thing makes people's lives. You don't know how you impact people. We don't really understand that. You're... You talking to someone for five minutes, a random fucking stranger, can maybe meet a stranger that's feeling so lonely that's like, oh my God. They'll go home and they're like, I had a five minute conversation today with someone. And it sounds kind of like, you know, you know, Hallmark, but it's not. I see this. I see this in the people I work with who are lonely. And someone all of a sudden gives them, turns their attention to them and how it does ripples so deeply to them. They feel human again. They feel like they are being seen, what you said. They feel like, oh my God, someone saw me. You know, a great example of this is for those who watched the, the latest version of The Joker. Oh, yeah. That movie is so good, right? Yeah. And there is this moment where he starts his transformation and he goes to his social worker. And he says to her, you don't understand. Until recently, I didn't even know I existed. You don't. You didn't even know I existed. You didn't even look at me. You kept sitting there, looking at your notes, looking at your computer. You didn't treat me as a person. Now, that's an exaggerated version of a very real reality. 
really. And I hope people who are listening to this, like really, it's not about making this dramatic. It's about, because it, what he talks about is presence, right? This is what we've been talking about for a lot in this pod. It's how present I am, how relatable I am, how open I'm willing to be, how vulnerable I'm willing to be, and how that has power to move energy within systems. People like you know that because your parents. You see, every yeah. single thing you do, these four big eyes look at you and they, you impact their whole life. Yeah, every single thing. Yeah, and it's and it's it's a blessing and it's a curse because Absolutely. at the same time, as much as I can uh, show up and be present, and my my one of my latest word tracks that I use with people and whether it be my children, my coworkers, my wife is you don't have my full attention right now. Please give me a minute. You don't have my, because it's so easy for me to be doing this or doing mm -hmm. this and you're talking and you have a very small sliver of my brain. So my new, like my kid, I'll be like, Emma, you don't have my full attention right now. Just give me one minute. Mm -hmm. And then I'm present with you. And now I could, understand what you're saying rather than give you some fly-by-night answer seem to your co-workers to walk in my office hey vin you don't have my full attention right now you have to give me one minute beautiful and there are times where i'm like you don't have my full attention you're not getting it so if you want my full attention you either have to really wait or you're getting a part of my attention span and that's cool too if you're good with that let's roll with that but right now you don't Love have it. my full attention and it is about being present and as a therapist or whatever role you take on, even even common folk, lay folk, whatever it is, it is All that us. interaction at the supermarket. It is how you interface and interact from, you know, reverse engineering the potential moments that led up to this moment. And I'm such a huge people watcher. Like, I'll be at the dinner with my wife and I'll stare at people and she'll be like, you're staring. I'm like, I'm just making up an entire world <laughs> about these people and what brought them to this very moment and you know it may be true it may not be true i have no idea but it goes back to that point of it's just what led them here and they're here now and and you get to you get to you get to observe it and it's it's when you sit with people and whether it be in a men's group or, or a therapy session or a child your child your friend when you sit with people and you hear their story or you hear the their movie of their life, it is so unbelievably incredible. Incredible. It is so interesting. The nuance, the 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 avenues, the the alleyways that they've gone down in life, and then you get to meet them in these moments these 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 crossroads of life mm -hmm. and it's just such a privilege to exist with people and to experience exactly. this world you you're you're great you'll be you're giving so much to your people and it's exactly that it's such a privilege when you live in that level of consciousness you actually this is where we call it when we do our any groups we do we talk about the village model of learning so when we talk to people about when you, someone in the group is sharing, we ask people to do three things. One is you listen and you listen to what resonates, what activates, what soothes you. So in a way, you were one eye out and one eye in. So when I listen to you talk and something moves me deeply, that's an opportunity for me to learn from your wisdom, from your life story. So when we do that in a village, you can grow and learn so much when you're present and listening from that human connection. And it's incredible what that little, even that little piece of tuning, like, like helping people focus their attention does for them. When we're like, what, what resonates, what activates you, what soothes you and use that, sit with that. So if I'm listening to you and I'm like, all of a sudden I'm really angry and activated and like, why am I so angry right now? Everything is an opportunity. Everything is shared wisdom. Everything is shared. Everybody becomes a teacher. 
and everybody is a student, right? That's like that queen the center spiritual truth. But you have to get on that level that you're talking about for that to happen. Well, well I always realize that no one has any idea what the fuck is going on. It's really that simple. <laughs> really, everyone is just like learning from someone else. Best. And using our word tracks and saying something someone else said. And even this conversation is rooted in knowledge and learning and information Absolutely. that we've taken and we've internalized and we've processed and we've articulated in our own ways and our own points from our own perspectives. Absolutely. But it is our human duty, or at least I believe it is, to show up in this way because it yeah. is our truest, most authentic version of ourselves, Absolutely. even down to... You know, whomever it is, it is who we are in essence. And that is the God self that shows up. You know, it's the old cliche, you know, God sees God. You know, mm -hmm. you see the God in another because you could see the God within yourself. And that's Absolutely. the point where you you could say you've arrived, but that's just the beginning. You know, it's, you know, I take Brazilian jiu-jitsu and one of my professors, he's he's brilliant because he's so simple. And I say that mm -hmm. to him all the time. I say, you're so, the answers are so simple, but because I'm so rooted and I'm not at that level, I don't see those answers, but you, you allow me the opportunity to understand those answers and realize it is that simple. And I always say, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's white belt moves with black belt awareness, you know, mm. it's, it's just knowing the dance. And it is, if you, if you tap into any part of the dance that you could flow with, I find it to be your your humanistic 3D duty to pass along that knowledge. If I know there's a cop on the side of the road that's pinning people for speeding, and I know you're driving down that road, I feel a responsibility to be like, hey, man, there's a cop on the right side of the road. Just be aware. Or there's a pothole on the left lane that's Absolutely. blown out tires. Be aware of it. So it's our responsibility to give that heads up to those around us and to our community and to our children and to our friends and family or whomever the stranger in the supermarket. I I love that you said that. Right? Cause I, as you were talking, I was like, yes, that's I I'm, I'm very much with you. I believe that collective change starts with people and not the other way around. That for me lands in what you're saying. Exactly. It's like, if I do my, my psycho spiritual human duty, which is even telling you about that cop, right. Or telling you about whatever, slowly it expands and that's how systems change collectively we keep waiting for some invisible parent or invisible like power you know person to come and be like okay you know what i'm going to change the system for you right. you're welcome i'm going to fix it all for you that's never going to happen that's really that's where you know we can bow our head to freud and we talked about like the father mother complex we just project it outwards and we give our power away Instead of taking our power back and be like, actually, we have a lot more power to change. So I love what you're saying. It's exactly that's how we're going to change systems, all the dysfunctions in our systems. Before that, nothing's going to change. Incremental, small. You know, what's his name? Um, Jamie Foxx talked about it. When April 2020 happened and all the racial upheaval in the United States happened, he said something and I loved it. He said, Let's talk in six months. He, he he just called it out. He's like, this happens every time. Everybody's going to get up in arms. In a month, it's going to start fading away. In three months, some people will talk about it. In, in six months, nobody's going to talk about this. Yeah. We have a very short-term memory. Oh, my God. Yes. We're all goldfish. <laughs> just extend Some of that. us are aware that we're in the bowl. <laughs> Amen. Dr. Cohen, <laughs> this was absolutely tremendous. Uh, Thank you. I really, really appreciate the conversation. Um, mm -hmm. I, I always, you know, we kind of touch base a little bit, and I always just try to walk in these these conversations. And uh, I really just appreciate you showing up, sharing sharing the conversation with me, your experiences with me. And uh, this was absolutely tremendous. I really appreciate it. Where can people connect with you? Where can people find more of your work? Awesome. Thank you so much, Rini. Really, I, it's one of the most enjoyable pods I've ever done, truly. And Thank you. I really appreciate what you're bringing to your people, the groups you're doing, your listeners, really, your perspective. We need more. Um, 
you can find me on um instagram it's dr dot ido cohen i d o c o h e n and for those who are psycho spiritually psychedelic interested you can find me find us on the integration circle so it's at T H E integration circle, all one word. And thank you. This is this is wonderful. Thank you so, so much, rich. Dr. Cohen. I, so I appreciate it. And uh all the all the best to you. Much love to you. See you in the same. Thank you, Vinny. Hi everyone. This is Dr. Ido Cohen. Welcome to the Vinny Brasco show. You're listening to the amazing podcast. Mm -hmm.